been 17 years and that unique feel of Psychonauts is actually back on our TV screens. This is Psychonauts 2. Don't go away. Psychonauts 2. Uh, well, if you play Psychonauts 1, which I would be surprised if you actually did because it is a great platforming game. Uh, great game overall, but not a lot of people played it. It does have a cult following though. My biggest question with Psychonauts 2 is what are we looking at? Uh, wh what's coming back? Well, right off the bat, Rasputin, more formally known as Raz, comes back to be the main character, thank god. Rasputin, after going to Psychic Summer Camp, is now an intern. And in order to become a full Psychonaut, he has to go on a very dangerous mission, because guess what? The evil you-know-who has returned. It's Maligula. And she's coming back, and she is ready to wreak havoc. But what you'll be doing the majority of the time is the B-side story getting the Psychic Six back together. Mostly through entering their mind and rearranging and fixing a lot of the stuff that has gone wrong over the years. Now inside these mines are the levels that you'll be playing through and the level design I am safe to say has hit that bar that the previous title has made. My favorite thing about these levels is that they're themed. Uh, to each individual and they're themed to the brim with content. Just a small sample size I can dish out here out of my memory vault is there's the casino gambling level, there's the sensory overload level where you do individual levels inside the level of touch, smell, hearing, sight. There's the overgrown garden, the island exploration, the library with the books, and there's just so much creative things that happen in those levels. Like in the gambling level where you need three coins to, to pass to the next part. One of these coins is gained by playing a Plinko machine and beating it. Another coin is based on betting on a race. Uh, the only coin you need is the, the, the one in a gazillion coin. So you bet on heart because it's a one in a gazillion chance to win because the heart is injured. Heart loses every time. So you bet on the heart, you take the heart's place in the race and you win. That's a fun one. Even the couple that you talk to in the game level are hilarious. Rigged. Maybe I could help unrig it. Oh, if you could do that, you could have all the money. Yes, we don't care about that. Because we're so rich. Yes, very wealthy, it's true. But poor in children. Even the main hub world is great. Although there is technically three hub worlds, which is kind of weird. You have the main hub world of Psychonaut base camp, HQ, pretty much. You have the other hub world of outside Psychonaut HQ. Pretty good. And then you have the third hub world of uh, the questionable area. All three of these are great. Uh, the questionable area is the f my favorite to explore because there's so much to do there. Wasn't where to set up the Aquatodome. You found Bucky Fierro's questionable area. But overall, the exploration in the hub world was great. There's no hand-holding. You can do whatever you want, whenever you want, and uh, there's great to explore there. Now, here's the downside of Psychonauts 2. A slight downside. The core elements of a platformer, uh, in my opinion, one half is mobility, and the other half is collecting. Psychonauts 2 doesn't absolutely flame out, bomb the whole category. It just noticeably is a bit disappointing. So here's my explanation. All you do in platformers is move and jump and jump and move. That's all you ever do. So the movement for a platformer has to be pristine, crisp, satisfying, easy to control, hard to master. I immediately think of games like A Hat in Time, which was great to try and get around a movement. Or Super Mario 64, which is still playing to this day being speedrun, not because it was simple, but because it was great, fun, satisfying. Psychonauts 2 has jump, a short double jump, and uh, a, a balloon that you levitate on, that you slowly fall down, which lasts like four seconds. That's it. And I thought I was crazy, so I went back and checked out Psychonauts 1. And in fact, the double jump was a lot better back there. The double jump is so short, it felt so limited playing through the entire game. There actually is an upgradable thing for the levitation bow where if you charge it, 
you could jump really high. And I was very excited when I got this. This is sick. This can open up so many areas. I, I can jump. I can jump so high now. The problem was is that it was so limited. When charged, you can only. Sure, you. When charged, you go high. Sure, but you can only go forward, left, right, or back about a couple inches. Like there is very limited movement there. It's not insanely bad or very noticeable. It just was when I first picked up the controller and started playing as Rasputin, I immediately noticed that it was a bit short. Now the other half of the heart of what a platformer should be is collecting. Collecting should never be a chore in games. And it's not, it's not in Psychonauts 2. I just didn't care for it towards the end, which is pretty bad. When I think of collecting items, I immediately go to Tomb Raider. 2013's Tomb Raider to be exact because collecting in that game uh, there wasn't much of an incentive other than XP boost but the main incentive was you get to look at all these cool treasures you found. Used in traditional Japanese herbal medicine or Kampo. <laughs> Looks like this vial has been sealed for many years. Or in The Witcher 3 where I would spend hours and hours sailing through Skellige getting every question mark in the game not because of I wanted to see the number go up of question marks found but because there could be a super epic sword hidden there somewhere. In Psychonauts 2 the incentive to collecting is not there. Here's what you can collect in Psychonauts 2. You can collect bag tags that you can combine with the bag tags but only if it's the specific bag tag because there's about four or five different kinds so if you get the wrong kind then you're sort of boned. You can collect cards, and if you get 9 cards, you can take it to an auto upgrade shop to upgrade Rasputin by 1 point. You can collect card cores, which come with the core and all 9 cards to give you a free upgrade point. You can collect golden nuggets. You can collect brains, where if you get one half of a brain and need another half of the brain, you upgrade your max HP. You can collect memory vaults. You can collect figments. And figments is the problem I had with this game. I did the math on this. There are about 1300 to 1400 figments in this game. It's about a 12 to 15 hour game. Now, including cutscene time and everything, every 32 seconds you are collecting a figment. That's crazy. What do these figments do though? Well, not much. In fact, really nothing. They contribute to Rasputin's total XP. And with XP comes leveling up, with leveling up comes upgradable points. Upgradable points let you upgrade your psychic abilities, which are great. I got to upgrade my pyrokinesis pretty quickly because I was collecting everything. I appreciate the positivity. Then I got to upgrade my time bubble and my archetype. And the problem is though, I didn't really find a use for the majority of the psychic abilities, especially in combat. Like, what did mental connection do? Not much. Levitation ball, in combat at least, you could roll it at them, but it did very little damage. So it got to the point where I wasn't collecting any figments because I didn't need any XP, which is not great because at the end, I was like level 60-62 I think, and I had about 15 upgrade points left over just sitting on the sideline. That's not all you collect though. You collect Citanium, which is this game's currency. What can you get with Citanium, you may ask? Well, you can get health upgrades, pretty much well, pretty much the Resident Evil equivalent of green herbs packed in your pocket. Or the equivalent of Mario 1-ups, where if you die, you just spawn right there instead of restarting the level. But you can also get what the game calls pins, which are interesting, I'll say. Because some pins are good, like an upgrade on your PSI Blast, which can chain. Sort of like a lightning chain, which is which is good. Uh, you could change, there was a fun one in there. You can change your archetype into a retro archetype. Also change the sound on them. Pretty cool. But about 90% of the pins didn't interest me at all. And it got to the point where I was hoarding Citanium in the upgradable pouch, by the way. I upgraded the max amount of Citanium I could hold right away. And I still hoarded a thousand Citanium through level and level and level because there was nothing to spend it on. But here's the kicker. Even if I did find all these pins enticing and I bought 30 pins, I bought 30 pins, none of them are passive. You have to equip them. Sure, fine. 
but the max amount you can equip at any time is three. Disappointing. But speaking of combat, this is where Psychonauts 2 does a great job compared to Psychonauts 1. Psychonauts does bring back some enemies, but it also has some new ones. The Judge, Panic Attack, Bad Mood, Enabler, Regret, and the fun part of this is, is that they all play different. The same way you fight Bad Mood is a completely different way you fight the Panic. And overall, towards the end of the game, it got so fun in combat scenarios because you would have like five different types of enemies coming at you and you had to deal with each and every one of them individually. And the enabler, which pretty much stitches itself to another enemy, you'd have to kill off the enabler before you kill that one. So you sort of end up in this triage combat scenario. And uh, I loved it. They're under the And this is really why I love platformers from a visual perspective, is they're a gamer's game. It's not hinged to any reality, it's not like you have to be an FPS Call of Duty set in a modern time where you can have, ooh, kangaroos running around in Call of Duty, like you can't have that. But in platformers and in Psychonauts especially, there is no other game that looks or sounds or has the charm that Psychonauts does. And there's so much effort put into the visual representation of this game. Every small character that you found, especially in the library level, I really noticed where every character you saw had a voice line. And there had to have been like 40 or 50 I walk up to that had a different voice line from the next. That was really good. There was a point where there was a bell on the librarian's desk. And during a, a talking dialogue scene, I just hit it because it was a bell. I, I wonder. And it dinged. And it didn't just ding, I hit it again, and it dinged again, a different sounding ding. Which means that for that single bell on that single desk, they put in more than one sound effect. Just on the off chance that a player would actually hit it. That's crazy. Hey, can you help me find these books? I'm her favorite assistant and best assistant, and I already looked, so give it up. As I said before, levels are themed, and you understand now why after you play this game, why it took 17 years to get the next game. Themed levels are filled to the brim with stuff that is related to that object. Soundtracks, on the other hand, are not too prominent except for maybe the Psychonauts hub theme and the circus theme, which is kind of a banger to be honest. But overall, I never really found myself enjoying a soundtrack overly. In fact, the devs had actually some fun with an annoying soundtrack towards the end, where you could find a secret wall or find a secret area in each of the three levels, where you could break a gramophone and it would stop the playlist and Raz would be like, phew, thank God that's over. So for overall impact, there's one uh, thing that sticks in my mind about this game. It's exactly what I wanted. When I think of what I want in games nowadays, I just want a fun-filled single-player experience where I can go in and I don't get bombarded with buy the gold edition or buy the microtransactions or get ready for DLC, pre-order that DLC for $33.99. There was none of that. I just started the game, it was filled with fun, creative, new ideas, and it was fleshed out. And it's exactly what I would want as a sequel. Because here's the problem I have with sequels these days. It's either you get A or B. On the A side, you just get sequel, 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 sequel. Like, oh, Far Cry 3 was really good. It hit box office numbers, it hit big stuff, critics loved it, I loved it. Boom! Far Cry 4 comes out immediately after, boom! Yeah, Far Cry 4, great, I love Far Cry 4, I, oh, Far Cry 5, boom, same thing, run it again, okay, then, oh, New Dawn, New Dawn came out, Far Cry 6, the next one, <laughs> <laughs> or you get B scenario for the next game in a series, where you go from something like Resident Evil 4, 5, and 6, which were pretty similar, to Resident Evil 7, and it, it's, it's like, or you could even say from Resident Evil 3 or Code Veronica to Resident Evil 4, it, it completely changed up everything. Personally for me, what I want from sequels or remakes is give me the exact same thing, except change up the story, change up a little bit. I love the original game because it had great charm, great characters, and amazing levels. Oh, I do so hope that my mother is proud of me! Not again! 
And I got that in Psychonauts 2. It is the exact same game. It has the same main character. It has the same side characters. It has the same love interest. It has the exact same collectibles in every aspect possible. It brings back the majority of the psychic abilities. It has the exact same premise of going into mines for levels. Hell, it even has some of the same Easter egg stuff where Bobby Zilch in Psychonauts 1 did a victory dance that I guess Raz interpreted here in Psychonauts 2. Flying at you, stupid. What's flying at me? Well <laughs> Bobby Zilch's foot, that's what? You stupid new kid. Yeah. <laughs> So for my last point here I want to make before I run the clock on this review is this is truly one of the funniest games I've ever played. I, I said the same thing about Psychonauts 1. I, I, I'm so glad it returned here, but if I'm, I can't show a million clips of why this game is funny, so I'll just show one that encompasses the entire comedy of this game where you talk to one of your fellow students uh, at the internship. Uh, she's at the pancake house making pancakes, and uh, things get a little... Sus. Didn't I? Didn't I, Fur Lancelot? I hate to yell at you, Fur Lancelot, but I. I. I am the crushed one. It crushes my heart to see you not doing your best. Understand? Now, do I need to show you how to crush things? No? You sure? Okay. Good boy. Now, try again, but this time think about personal commitment and delivering excellence every day, all right? Sorry you had to see that, Raz. I have some questions about pancakes. <laughs> Start flapping, Jack. What's your recipe? Just the basics, you know, eggs, milk, flour. Found most of it here, with a couple quick substitutions. What sort of substitutions? If I told you, it would compromise the perceived flavor profile. Isn't that just straight up dirt? For the umami. Where'd you get the milk? From the goats? Oh, yeah, that would have been easier. <laughs> hey, it brought us closer, Fran. You used eggs you found here? Old eggs? No! Gross! I found some fresh ones. And you know, if you use enough syrup, you can't tell chicken from snake. Eggs is eggs. Can I have a pancake? You can have any that fall on the floor. Thanks. Where'd you learn how to make pancakes? Prison. Wait, what did I say? I meant from my mother. I'm out of pancake questions. Good, because I'm out of pancake puns. Now that the pancake talk is over, I can give this game a rating, and I gotta say, I'm looking at a pretty solid 8.6 out of 10. So that's it, uh, I gotta be honest, Psychonauts 3, it's kinda open for it. I don't know how long it would be uh, until Psychonauts 3, hopefully it's not 17 years. Even if they told us 10 years as Psychonauts 3, sure, sure, why not, I'll do it, I'll do it. But for now, I'm your host, Sailor Entertainment, and I hope you review. Peace out. Yes, Rasputin? Uh, we got a patient here, needs emergency access. Sorry, the table minimum in the High Rollers Lounge is, uh, three gazillion dollars. What? How much is a gazillion? More than you got. What is up? I know what you're thinking. You're only here for the bonus Easter egg soundtrack I put in at the end of every video. But did you also know I have a donation page under Buy Me A Coffee? Donate whatever you want to my channel and I'll put half of that back to an environmental charity. So that's that. Enjoy the music. Peace out.